Two geeks, two beers, and a laptop. Episode 17, Point and Click Adventure Games. Good morning. I am Guybrush Threepwood. Boy, am I getting tired of saying this. Mighty pirate, yada yada yada. Oh, hey. success. Pretty good. Cheers. Cheers. Well, hello. Welcome to a brand new episode of Two Geeks, Two Beers and a Laptop with me, Tom and Morgan. Hello, chums. So first, a little bit of housekeeping, really, just to sort of show how influence... How we, influential we've been. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know the amount of different things that have been coming out since we've done our episodes. Basically, we, we think uh, we might not have the most listeners, <laughs> we might not be making any money, but uh, the cultural impact, the subtle it's cultural impact of Two Geeks yeah. is uh, is staggering. Well, as we opened our laptops today, we saw that there's a new Prisoner film coming out, apparently, mm-hmm. with Ridley Scott. Directed by Ridley Scott? Uh, it says Ridley Scott to direct the film adaptation of The Prisoner. And he sometimes makes good movies. Are you going to be uh, first in line? First in line for that one? <laughs> Camping out overnight? <laughs> I'm hoping it's a complete reboot and they don't... Uh, <laughs> to, the, to the extent that they just completely ignore the yeah. concept and... Uh... And also, there is a Tremors TV series coming. Yes. With Kevin Bacon. With Kevin, ba- with Kevin Bacon. So, hopefully you listen to our podcast and thought, that's a good <laughs> idea. Uh, there is a reboot reboot coming out, but I think we can't, can't mention that before. A reboot reboot. Still no Defenders of the Earth movie, though. No. Which okay. seems like a gem waiting to happen. Yeah. Hollywood... Get but, your get your ideas in order. But Dean Kane is back. Dean Kane is back. I feel like our Lois and Clark episode has helped revive Dean Kane's. Uh, <laughs> he was not only in the. What was that movie called? With the uh, it Vendetta? Yeah, with uh, the Big Show. With the Big Show, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> WWE legend, the Big Show. Me and Tom uh, watched that uh, straight to. I guess it's straight to DVD, straight, straight to, to online, stream. straight to stream <laughs> classic. Um, yeah. I can't. I think re- saying we recommend it would be, perhaps be too yeah. strong, but. Uh, if, it had if, its if, moments. It had its, if it had its moments. If you're having a night in with a with a couple of beers, yeah. stick on Vendetta with Dean Kane. But he's so he's not doing Big Brother. He's not doing I'm a Celebrity. He's no. doing the Jump. The right? Jump. Channel 4's yeah. Winter Sports. Yeah. Uh, yeah, challenge show. I'm, I don't know how he would have come up in conversation, but I'm, I'm <laughs> hoping he's just an enthusiast of the sport. But who knows? Anyway, this time this episode is all about mm. point and click adventure games. Yes. Which because in our first ever episode we said one of the examples would be that we do episodes on games. It could be about games. anything, it'd be about yeah. movies and T V shows and games and we've mainly done stuff about nineties <laughs> cartoons. So after like fifteen episodes we're finally going to the mm. world of games. Now I need clarification because yeah. <laughs> what is a point and click well, adventure game? Because I, I I found out that I've been like operating under various misapprehensions <laughs> when it comes to games because I'm not a, I'm not a big gamer I've played yeah. games but I'm not a gamer and like for example I thought beat-em-ups were yeah. just games in which you fight yeah but turns out beat-em-ups is a very specific subgenre of games it, it's like the scrolling like fighting Street's game Raid. like Streets Rage okay. not Mortal, uh, Mortal Kombat no, Street Fighter that's, that's, they're just called fighting games yeah, yeah, apparently yeah. No, I'm, I'm not a massive gamer um, I was quite late in the day and mm. my first experience of gaming was on our MS DOS system, <laughs> right. the platform games like Duke Nukem and all that kind of mm. stuff. But I, 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 the, the, the genre that I loved as I was growing up was adventure games. But this kind of adventure games, because the term adventure games is quite broad. It's like the, it's the fighting games yeah. to the beat em ups. Yeah, yeah. Because there's lots of even in this this type of adventure games. We're not talking about like Tomb Raider or Uncharted those yeah. kind of games. These are more like um, where it's like a narrative, and you've given a task, and you've got puzzles, and you've got to collect objects. Normally, with the use of a mouse, and you're clicking on things. Right. I've got to say, it sounds a little nerdier than, uh, say, say Tomb Raider and Uncharted. It is very nerdy. Which is why it's appealed to young Tom Eames. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on the classic point-and-click style. Right. Um, I'm already confused. Yeah. I need a drink. <laughs> what are we drinking today? Oh, yeah, today? I was going to say. Um, again, we're going to have to make do with whatever Sainsbury's down a local gives us. Yes. And I went for Hobgoblin. Yes. Purely because it sounds a bit nerdy and gamey. Sure. It's a bit fantasy-esque. Exactly. Yeah. So, All right. Uh, so, a sip of that. Yeah. All right. Very tasty. Yeah. What I like about it is these massive, massive uh, glass uh, bottles. Yes. Um, so we, we yeah. might get quite drunk by the end yes, of this episode. Indeed. These kind of adventure games sort of started back in like the uh, 70s and early 80s mm-hmm. uh, with the more kind of like text-based games where you have to sort of input a command. Right, okay. It's like uh, Hitchhiker's Guide is probably the most okay. famous version of that. Um, so very limited. You play it now, it's kind of yeah. what's going on. Yeah. But very groundbreaking at the time. 
But then, in the late 80s and mid 90s, it kind of peaked with loads of British games, some of which we'll focus on in a minute. Um, but by the noughties, it kind of had its day. Why do you think it? Why do you think it died a death? I think you can't really play on console. Sure. So um, it's, it's PC. Yeah, it's very PC centric. And it, yeah. there are there are equivalents. Like uh, recent years, you've got things like LA Noir, Heavy Rain, The Walking Dead games. They're all they've got elements of point and click. So okay. they are having a resurgence. Well, I guess the clue is in the name, point and click. Exactly. You know, you, you, that means yeah, PC. Exactly. But when you got in the turn of the noughties and you got all these amazing graphics and stuff, why would mm. you s- sit on your PC and play Broken Sword when, mm. when you can play things like I don't know, um, I say Uncharted and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So, but it, it is coming back. But I, what I find interesting is that the term adventure game um, isn't about adventure. Right. It actually came from a 1970s game, text game called Adventure. So it's like adventure-esque game. Yeah. So right, okay. Like, a game like, like adventure. Adventure novels are about adventure, adventure. Treasure Island, all that kind of stuff. But right? these are games that are like the game adventure. Exactly. Okay. Which is, I just find that very <laughs> fascinating. So what I'm going to do for this episode in particular is mm. uh, focus on uh, a selection of my personal favourites. Okay. Which I also think are quite classic and iconic in their own way okay. that you may have may know a bit about you know? well I think I'll surprise you with yeah. my ignorance that's <laughs> what we'll see so uh, what, what's your experience of, of uh, you know adventure games in particular what, what well, I, any experience whatsoever literally I I played a little bit of Monkey Island yeah, as a coming, kid coming. and excellent no, then I'll enjoy that segment but that is my that is the depth of my knowledge. Like I'm, I'm a very uh, sh- like shallow gamer. Like I, I, <laughs> I, I played uh, the Mega Drive as a kid. Yeah, uh, we'll probably do a Mega Drive episode oh, in the future at some point. Uh, Streets of Rage, Golden Axe, all of those. But and then I, 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 I've, I've always played games, but I'm, I'm not a gamer, and I've never really played games on a PC. I've always played on consoles. Right. Yeah. See, I was, a, I was a PC boy, and then uh, over the years, like my, I got a Mega Drive, like. Way later, and yeah. The same view, I, mean. I think we both said that we, we yeah. got a Mega Drive and everyone else had a PlayStation yeah. One and so on. But it's weird with all you know, with your nerdy upbringing, with mm. all your love for comics, and, stuff, um, and, and my, thought you'd have loved all that. And stuff. a lot of my uh, geeky traits I sort of inherited from my brother, the love of uh, comics and, and 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 all that kind of thing, and and old cartoons. But and he's a gamer, mm. or at least far more so than myself. But I've I've just never got into it. It's never appealed to me. I think maybe it's just too active. I'm too lazy. So the first game. I'm going to do is the Broken Sword series. I see. I've, I've heard of Broken Sword, yeah. but I know nothing about it. So there are five games in the series from Revolution Software, and the first was. I thought you were going to say <laughs> from Revolution to Revelation, <laughs> Broken Sword, Revolution, <laughs> Broken Sword, Resurrection. So I hate those titles. I've said before. No, the, the first was the Shadow of the Templars. Oh, that's much better. From 1996, um, and you play as George Stobart, right? Who's an American lawyer on holiday. He looked at me as if I'd farted at a funeral. Um, and then he meets this uh, pretty French journalist called Nico Collard, who you then play in the next games, like both both of them. Okay. The first game is just George. The girl presented a confident but sullen mask to the world, an expression more suited to the face of a delinquent youth. And he's a, a witness at a murder at a, a little cafe. He's just a guy. And then in, in he suddenly... Over time, find yourself just in the centre of the Knights Templar and all that shit. Okay, is it is it kind of like Die Hard, where in the first Broken Sword game he's like a regular dude and kind yeah. of gets by and kind of scrapes through, and by by the fifth game, or whatever, he's just like an absolute badass and it's no fun anymore. Sadly, he never turns into a badass. He's just no, that's good though. It's, it's good. Well, yeah, he's, he doesn't go full Bruce. Yeah, but he's uh, what I like about it. He's just a regular guy, but mm. he's obviously chiselled and you know, <laughs> right. right. Um, but it's kind of like the first one was like a good version of. Um, the Da Vinci Code type thing where it's all like uh, you know hidden secrets and okay kind of stuff. Indiana Jonesy a little bit yeah a little bit yeah but because it's point and click you couldn't do any kind of you know, proper adventuring it's right. more like uh, do that and then do that and then click on that mm. um, but he's voiced by a guy who I just love his name Rolf Saxon excellent who's also appeared in everything from Saving Private Ryan to the Teletubbies there you go <laughs> what, so, who, who did he voice was he oh, voiced the Teletubbies <laughs> well I'm hoping well we know it's not one of the, the main core characters <laughs> He was just the narrator, I think, in the American version. Ah, oh, okay. I was hoping he was like the... Yeah. What, what was it? The, the Tubby Hoover or something? Oh, well. oh uh, uh, is that Nunu? Nunu, Nunu, there we go. God, I've plucked that from my... Teletubbies, book. that won't be a future episode of Two Geeks. No, it won't indeed. Uh, but I wanted to play you just the intro of the first game, just because it's strangely beautiful. If they ever do make a film, which we'll get onto in a moment, we might as well just take this and copy it. Paris in the fall. The last months of the year and the end of the millennium. The city holds many memories for me, of cafes, of music, of love, and of death.
As I picked myself up, all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic. Life went on around me. But the explosion was to change my life forever. That was great. Very, very dramatic. It was like like dark Disney. <laughs> well, the animation's kind of like, was it Don Bluth and all that? Yeah. It, is, it was really good for its time. So when did that come out? That was in 1996. Very good. Um, and there were five games in the series. Actually, no. What I wanted to mention was the cover art for this particular game. If you picked it up in the store, why the hell you... It, it, it gives you no, no clue as to what the actual game is like. Okay. Have a look at this and try and describe it as best you can. Okay. As a broken sword novice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, it's sort of a, a man's disembodied face. Not George Stone. Not, not the main character. Right. Um, some sort of symbol on his forehead there. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of um, swirling colours. Maybe an old coin or a rubber stamp in yeah. the corner. Nothing to do with the game no. or what, what I've seen of it so far at all. No. Well, it, is, it looks like it's going to be a really sort of serious... Moody. Kind of, uh, it looks like... Um, who's, uh, we're in The Mummy. This is very huge. <laughs> in The Mummy, yeah. you've got the guy who looks like George Harrison, who had like the long hair and he right. with the beard. Oh, um, what's, that oh what's that actor called? I don't know. Oded Fair. Oded Fair. Oded Fair. He does look like Oded Fair. Oded he, Fair. <laughs> who played Our Death Bay. Never knew that. In, uh, in The Mummy and its sequel, The Mummy Returns. Now I would kill you and take it anyway. I think not. <laughs> explanations are best kept for later but yeah so the, there's five games in this series in, in the first two of that style and then the, set, the third game it, they turned it to like 3D graphics oh that's, and, mm, that's never as good yeah. Monkey Island I remember was the same where yeah. it, they kept changing the animation yeah. and always the best animation was that kind of 2D sort of Disney sort of yeah, Don Bluth yeah, style I, I hated it when they changed it to 3D yeah, so this one, the third one was 3D and it was actually you use your keys to move around like the Monkey Island and Grim Fandango mm -hmm. Yes, I can hear your Grim Fandango. <laughs> that's what I think any time. I don't know what Grim Fandango is, but that's all I can think of. Uh, but then the fourth one was still 3D, but they brought back the point and click element. Okay. So that's fine. And then the fifth game, which came out in 2013 after a crowdfunding campaign, was that style. So the fans funded it? They asked for the fans' money? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and including me. Did you pay? I did. How much? I can't remember. 20 quid? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> remember, we don't make money from this, and yet he's just throwing money at these Kickstarters and these... Ah, oh. but yes, yeah, so that was back to its original style. Original style, and it was genuinely really, really good. Right. So uh, it's come. Oh, back. good! Since you pay for it, can yeah. we pay for? Uh, but since two thousand and seven, uh, creator Charles Cecil has spoken of a potential film. Because you, if you play the game and you look at the style and, mm. and the, the plots and all that, it, it, it bodes well for a really. You know, Would you? Do you think they should do an, a live action movie, or do you think they should do? Again, we talk, they don't really do no. um, big budget animated no. movies. But you know, back in the day, where there were things Titan like AE. Titan AE and yeah. um, Atlantis: The Lost Empire, exactly. well, not very good, no. but they looked they great. Look great. That style, that's it? very much yeah. that style. But I'm surprised they didn't do it at the time because, you know, or mm. when like as they um, mm. really And apparently, lots of studios have been interested over the years in a live action version. Yeah, but as of 2012. He said that he'd, he'd, he'd be much better to kind of have no movie at all than a bad one. True. But he expects one eventually, so... Who would you cast as the lead? Ooh. Uh, Josh Holloway. <laughs> you would cast Josh Holloway in everything. Josh Holloway with Chris Barry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's weird. Um, the voice of Nico Collard mm. sounds exactly like the girl in Death in Paradise. Ah. What, the one who's left? Who's left. Exactly the same voice to the point where I actually looked it up and made sure it wasn't her. Yeah. It isn't her. Perfect casting. But... Bonjour, couleur. Oh, hi. It's George Stobart, the American at the cafe. I saw you taking photographs. How did you get my number? The gendarme gave it to me. Is anything wrong? I'll say there is. What do you want? I am stuck with you. You stuck with me. You may as well make the best of it. So, next up, the Monkey Island series. Monkey Island, which... Okay, so, here's everything I know about Monkey Island, having played it. The main character's called Guybrush Threepwood. Yeah. Look! A three-headed monkey! Uh, what's the main guy? He's like a, a, a ghost... Pi Lechuk, Lechuk. The ghost pirate well Lechuk. Remembered, well remembered. Eat flame and death, Threepwood! Um, and that is pretty much all I remember. <laughs> I think I played The Curse of Monkey Island, which that's, is like... That's the one I'm going to yeah. focus on. Well, the first four games were from LucasArts. The yes. last good thing he did. <laughs> uh, and the fifth was from Telltale Games, who are like the, the new leaders of the genre. <laughs> They're like the J.J. Abrams yeah. of yeah, Monkey yeah, Island. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, and it follows the misadventures of the hapless Guybrush Threepwood <laughs> yes. as he struggles to become the most notorious pirate in the Caribbean to defeat the plans of the evil undead pirate Lechuk and win the heart of governess Elaine Marley. And they were kind of pioneers of the... It was known as the player-friendly game where you can't really get into an unwinnable situation. So that's, that's probably why I like yeah, it so much. Because there are some uh, adventure games where if you don't do something early in the game... Mm. 
fucked. Right. You kind of have to start again or kill yourself so right. you get out of it. And you can't even really die in these games um, without a huge amount of effort. Uh, but oh, not only that, but it's obviously they're obviously known as just being genuinely hilarious, mm. these games. Very, very funny indeed. That's something I read the other day about Monkey Island, which I'm just looking at now. Orson Scott Card, right. who is a writer, who he wrote um, Ender's Game, which became that okay. film with Harrison yeah. Ford. Yeah, and then no one uh, watched it, it was rubbish. <laughs> no, it wasn't very good. Sorry, Orson. It wasn't very good. Um, he wrote the... But he's quite, you know, a famous fantasy yeah, yeah. novelist. And he wrote The Insults from Monkey Island 1. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. Because that's part of what I remember about it, is um, where you get to... You sort of, you have uh, jewels yeah, of insults, yeah. and you get yeah. to pick the best insults. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. I look that much like your fiancé. Killing you would be justifiable homicide. Then killing you must be justifiable fungicide. You're the ugliest monster ever created. If you don't count all the ones you've dated. But LucasArts, they're also behind classic games such as, uh, you may have heard of, Sam and Max. Or oh, I love Sam and Max. Dare the Tentacle as well. I, I, also yeah. had, I think my brother had Dare the Tentacle. I think I played that. This doesn't look like the Lincoln Tunnel, Sam. Looks to me like a marginally volatile hostage situation, Max. Ooh, does this mean we get to kick some puffy white mad scientist butt? Can't think of a reason not to. They're all very good. And then they ended up doing Grim Fandango, which we won't focus on today because it's not really point and click. It's more of a 3D game, but it... Grim Fandango is one of those beautiful, amazing games. Maybe we'll do a Grim Fandango episode. Just so we can keep doing that game. <laughs> it's such a solid gold gag. Sorry for the wait, Mr. Flores. I am ready to take you now. Take me? Take me where? Now, now. There's no need to be nervous. Nervous? No. It's just your appearance. It's a little intimidating. Intimidating? Me? But I'm your friend. My name's Manny Calavera. I'm your new travel agent. What I like about um, Monkey Island is that uh, co-creator Ron Gilbert has said that he was inspired by the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, you know, before right. it came into a film. Yeah. And the Tim Powers book on Stranger Tides, which the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean film was based on. Yes. yes it I, was. Just, I just thought that was... Nice. Really, you know. but, so apparently there's lots of like references to the ride before it became the film and whatever. So. How do you reference the ride there? Because from, from, yeah. from what, from what I remember about the ride, you basically just, you're on a boat yeah. and you're going... And, and, shit. and there's some And there's some pirates, some skeleton pirates and they just kind of sing at you. Yeah. But I don't know how. Right. But I don't know how you can remember bits because how many times do you have to go on the ride? It's well, it not, it's not like Disneyland was just down the road. Or <laughs> it doesn't take long, does it? Like, the ride's like five minutes long. You yeah. queue for about three hours. It's five minutes. Like rubbish. The Pirates of the Caribbean ride, absolute but rubbish. It was there for a long time. Is it I still was, there? I think they might have shut it down now. Oh, right. Okay. But the, the, I mean, the film uh, is <laughs> the great. Film. The first film's yeah, great. Until it just got up its own ass. Yeah. And miserable. It's almost like it. you can't make a franchise out of a out of a theme park uh, ride. Yeah. Yeah. When you marooned me on that godforsaken spit of land, you forgot one very important thing, mate. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. So, uh, yeah, I know the first two games were, uh, were very good and popular, mm. The Secret of Monkey Island and LeChuck's Revenge, but my favourite was always The Curse of Monkey Island yes. in 1997. Um, it was the first to use actual speech in their games. The rest of it, before that, was text. just text-based. Because right. um, I remember that, that that really appealed to me, the voice acting. It was uh, really, yeah, really great yeah, voice acting. Good. Um, and it just looked beautiful with the cartoons and the mm. backdrops. And do you find, with games in particular, <laughs> there's no nostalgia quite like kind of watching back moments from video games mm. because, unlike with films and TV, which you can watch and watch all the time throughout mm. the years, mm. once you played it, that's it. You don't really... Because games come out of fashion and the graphics are bad or you can't physically play them you don't tend, the consoles don't You don't tend to anymore. revisit games as much. And so when you no. watch them back on... YouTube or whatever. It's, it's a real blast from the past. It really hits you, yeah. you know, deep. There's one one bit in Monkey Island that I thought I'd play you, which I just thought was hilarious. You know, I've said how you can't die really in these games. Yes. There was one bit where he it looks like he did die. Guybrush. Yeah. Yeah. And it does this weird sort of breaking the fourth wall postmodern sort of uh, thing. Okay. So I'll play you this clip now. It just occurred to me that mixing medicine and alcohol is a really stupid and possibly lethal thing to do. If I were a real person instead of a lovably inept cartoon character with the potential for a few more sequels, I wouldn't even consider it. I don't feel the least bit drowsy. In fact, I, uh... In fact, I feel, uh... <laughs> Passed out cold. He'll come around. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Hmm. I guess that's the end of the game, then. What with him being the main character and all? Funny. I didn't think you could die in LucasArts Adventure Games. Well, maybe they're trying something different. Rest in peace and all that. Hey! I'm not 
not really dead? Oh, come on, cut it out. Whereas what you couldn't actually see yeah, there was, right. was that uh, after Guybrush apparently died, it came up saying, the end, and the credits started to roll, and then once he called it off, they went yeah. back down again. Yeah, very, very funny. Very good, very smart. And the, the last uh, game we're going to talk about is called uh, The Longest Journey. Uh, I've, an apt title. I've never, <laughs> I've never heard of this, no. not at all. Well, I, when I played it, mm. when I was a kid... When did it come out? Uh, 1999, okay. from Funcom, which I think is a brilliant <laughs> uh, uh, company. So this, so this is one of your favourite games? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I played it, and I enjoyed it. I, you know, it's a big deal. Mm. You, know, I, you know, whatever. And then, years later, only recently, I've realised that it's a fucking <laughs> huge deal for people. It's like right. a massive cult classic. Okay. And people dress up as the main character and all these conventions. People dress up as everything, though. Yeah. There's loads of sequels and all this. To show how long it is, when you play, when you look at those Let's Play videos, mm. uh, one is twelve hours longer than its entirety. And these, well, I get, could you save these games? Because I, 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 yeah, I, you I could. right, okay, right. it's not like, not like early in the day. <laughs> but again, my, my my knowledge is limited. But back when you used to play like Sonic the Hedgehog, no, and the the game actually only lasts like half an hour, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. but because you have to play it straight, so yeah. actually it'll, it'll last you months and months and months because you can't, be you so cannot well. save it. Yeah, but that's what I like about these games as well, because unlike, um, you know, certain games even now, mm. really good games, really, they might only last technically like three hours, yeah. if you're really good at it, yeah. whereas these, they can last, well, will last weeks, because you're only going to play them a couple of hours at a time max, maybe, yeah. if you've got know, school or work or whatever, and so they can last forever, like the longest journey. <laughs> um, this was a weird one, it's, it, it takes place in a parallel uh, universe, two parallel universes of magic-dominated Arcadia and Industrial Stark. And the protagonist, April Ryan, a girl. It's quite rare back then. <laughs> I wish I, I wish you could have seen Tom's gesture then. A girl! He raised his finger proudly. Uh, she's an 18 year old art student living in Stark. And she's identified as a shifter who's capable of movement between the worlds and is, in t- is tasked with restoring their essential balance. So, kind of like, sounds like a good version of Jupiter Ascending. Yeah. <laughs> a much, much, much better version. But as a kid, and to this day, I had no idea what was going on. No. It was far too complicated. That's pretty complex. But I just, I just liked to play in the games mm. I just liked you know um, but it was very vast and compelling mm. it is you you have come you know me April daughter I have been waiting for you waiting why because it begins here with you as it always has what do you mean the breach and the mending the pain and the joy, the end of the old and the dawn of the new. A different world. I am the mother of what is. But you, you are the mother of a future that may yet be. How will I know? How will I know what to do? I will guide you, and I will protect you as much as I can. But in the end, you are on your own. I'm afraid. You always were. My child, my daughter. This is probably not a good thing. And and they, they I've, I've read this thing where it says she's known as one of the best video game characters of all right. time. In- interesting that you know people say, oh, you need male characters yeah, well, to appeal to yeah. to male players and female characters yeah. to appeal to female players, whereas. This was a female lead character, and you enjoy playing her. It says, although she is represented with strongly feminine attributes, she is also part of a trend of strong, beautiful women in a variety of media that do not depend on men to achieve heroic deeds. So before her time. Fine. Yeah. Everyone can play as everything, yeah, and it's exactly. fine. Exactly. Calm down. Um, it could have its own episode, Longest Journey. I could go on about it for ages, because it's just too, <laughs> it's too complicated. It's right. too complicated. I, I think I spent a, a good year playing it. A as, year? As a kid, off, on and off. Must be addictive. Yeah. And, and bear in mind, back then... I'll get onto this in a minute. <laughs> well, I'll do it now. Yeah. Back then, you didn't. Ha- I didn't have the internet in the way that I do now. Sure. Right. So yeah. when I play, when I've played the these kind of games since the advent of the internet, mm. I I always start playing them wanting to do it myself. Yeah. Because I want to do it. I want to yeah. be clever enough to do yeah. it. But then when you, but then you're not clever enough. You're to not, do it. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> and then so I I just like printing out. Well, I used to print out. Now yeah. you can use your phone or whatever. Print out the walk walkthroughs like step by step yeah, guides, yeah. and I just liked even though it's technically cheating. Yeah. I liked it because I, I I considered the especially longest journey, which goes on for hours anyway. Yeah. Even if you use the cheats, it will last for ages. I liked having it. It's like watching a film 
but you've been told what to do. <laughs> yeah. I like doing it because I want to know what happens, like yeah. the story. Yeah, but I'm being told what to do. For younger listeners, uh, walkthroughs they were like let's play. <laughs> they were like let's play videos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but without the annoying shrill narration. Yeah. So actually, much oh, better. I tell you what, research this episode. Um, whenever you because like, there, there are two different types of let's play videos. Mm. One is the god awful type, which seems to be the most popular, where it's people talking as they're going along. Yeah. You know, oh my god, and just making silly faces and stuff. Sometimes they have the face in the corner, sometimes they don't. And it, I just find that pointless. Either way is obnoxious. But I, I want to just watch it as it was. Yes. Yeah. And they do they do exist. Yeah. There are great there are great things. Like there's um again sorry, Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. But there, there have you ever seen like a Sonic the Hedgehog speed run mm. where people just like complete the really first quick, yeah, the yeah. first level or whatever as quickly as they can. And those yeah. are those are actually just, you know, as the game played exactly. as it was, yeah. but just really, really well. And that's yeah. that's fun to watch. Some of these games just have odd puzzles in them. Mm. And I always get annoyed when it comes to the puzzle segments because mm. I just want it to be a story element. And so when the puzzle bit comes up I'm like, oh, But don't I'm clever don't... enough <laughs> But don't most of these games feature a lot of puzzles yeah. to solve. Well, some more than others, but right. yeah. But as I say, I always try and do it on my own, but then I just get annoyed and don't mm. to walk through it. You know? <laughs> but there are some moments where I just baffled as to how you could possibly do it on your own mm. without help. Mm. How, I, how did the first person ever do yeah, it? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to be either a genius with an IQ of whatever, mm. 400. Or your brother works at the games company. Yeah. <laughs> and and some, so some are just ridiculously hard and mm. others are just really ridiculously stupid. Do you have any examples? I do. I haven't played this game, but this is apparently an, an ultimate, one of the ultimate ones. Mm. It's called Gabriel Knight 3, so presumably there are two others before it. Right. Uh, and apparently the first two games are really good, and then this one kind of... At the side know, down. S- screwed the pooch. Mm. Well. <laughs> uh, so in this particular puzzle, uh, you're playing Monster Hunter uh, Gabriel, and you're in France, and you're trying to ra- rescue a baby from vampires. Right. Sure, and standard, you know. yeah. Now, this little puzzle, uh, he's trying to, for some reason, get a better scooter than the one that he has. Sure, well, if, if you're trying to... Get back to... <laughs> the baby. If you're trying to save a baby from vampires, you've got to have a scooter. Yeah. Um, and to do this, he has to pretend that he is his, his cop mate, who's in all the games, apparently. Okay. To get his better scooter. Sure. To do this, you have to steal his passport and then try to make yourself look like him. Okay. 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 Uh, so to do this, he has to create a fake moustache. <laughs> and to do that, you had to use masking tape on a hole. And then you had to scare a black cat so that it would then pick up its fur. And then you had to use maple syrup to stick on said fur. Yeah, this, this, this was the, the shit one of, yeah. of the trilogy, right? But then yeah. he looks at the passport and realises his mate doesn't have a moustache. So then he has to scribble it on, the passport. After all that. Okay, if, if his mate doesn't have a moustache yeah. and he's made a fake moustache, yeah. then he defaces the passport. Yeah. Just don't wear the moustache. Yeah. I know you've gone to a lot of effort yeah. with, the, with the cat and the maple syrup. Like anyway. but he... And then the guy goes, oh yeah, sure, go in. The moustache should help disguise the obvious disparity between his face and mine. Unfortunately for Moe's, things aren't quite that simple in real life. Hi. Is this where y'all rent mopeds? Oui. Uh, may I see your passport? Ah, Monsieur Mosley. Yes, I have a reservation for you. One moment. Apparently that was like added at the last minute because another puzzle had to be replaced or whatever. But I'm not still, surprised. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what were you thinking? Uh, going back to Broken Sword. Yes, there's please. A, there's an infamous one called the Goat Puzzle, which isn't actually all that bad. Mm. It's not... When you play it knowing it, you go, oh, it's fine. It's yeah. not that hard at all. But at the time... It was just, it makes sense why people didn't like it. And it's received kind of infamy over the years. And, and the goat has actually appeared in every game since. Oh, okay. As a, as a the joke. goat puzzle sounds like some yeah. kind of like college initiation. <laughs> you must complete the goat puzzle. So George has to get past the goat to get into the next stage, like down this like Right. Thing. And he has to get the goat's fur <laughs> on it, no. But every time you try and go past the goat, the goat like smacks into him. And so okay. as a player, especially as it's the only like time-based puzzle in the game. Where you right. Do something quick There's a countdown. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're not expecting that and also <laughs> you're not expecting the goat well once once you get hit by the goat you think well I obviously can't go there right. because the goat's there and every time I try and do anything but you have to get hit by the goat right and then you've got to run over to this other side to then create a trap for, for the goat yeah okay but your mind doesn't your mind doesn't work like that your mind doesn't work like that clearly because <laughs> you have to get the water through trust mate. me it's got a certain Wikipedia <laughs> page it's a big deal but uh, yeah, so you, 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 once you get hit by it, you go, yeah. I can't. That must be an obstacle that exactly. I can't get past. I've got, I've, got to get, I've got to go back and get something right. else to get an apple to distract the goat or something. Yeah. But now you've got to get hit by the goat to then. This reminds me of, I remember, do you remember the old TV show Games Master? 
Yeah, uh, hosted by Dominic Diamond yeah. with with um, no pa- pa- Patrick Moore yeah. as as the games master, and there was always a segment. They used to play games on that show and that kind of thing, and uh, you know, get great gamers would face off against each other. But there was always one uh, segment where uh, people would call in or whatever and, and say or send a video message saying, "Games master, help me with my gaming problem." <laughs> and most of the time, it was yeah. like, "Oh yeah, things like this." It's like, "How do I get past yeah. what was it?" The goat complex where <laughs> how do I get past the goat puzzle paradox. the goat the goat paradox um, but there was one time again sorry Sonic the Hedgehog but there was one it's the only game you played <laughs> I, I played it a lot I did play it a lot I played two and three and all the, and all the other ones Sonic Spinball okay. or whatever. we'll do Sonic one day because that's, that's mine we're going to we're going to do a Mega Drive yeah. episode but anyway someone like reached out to the Games Master and said Games Master when I try and collect the animals they hurt me what am I doing wrong and he's oh. like you're not supposed to collect them. You're supposed to jump on them. Those are your enemies. But that's like the first thing you do in the yeah, game. You start, you, you start the game and you jump on the animals. Jesus. That's, that's, so. <laughs> uh. Frankly, young man, that sort of question offends by intellect and doesn't deserve the answer. I'll play you a little clip of the goat complex. The goat, the goat yeah. paradox. Yeah, yes, see what I'm talking about. It was the fiercest, meanest looking old goat I'd ever laid eyes upon. Hey, Billy. The animal fixed on me with an evil glare. Behind the malice and resentment, there was a cool intelligence. How you doing, boy? I felt as threatened as I'd been by the assassin and his goons in Paris. Of course, of course, you meant to outwit the goat. <laughs> Cleverest goat in the world. Uh, and finally, going back to the longest journey, this mm. one just takes cake, biscuit, <laughs> beer. Um, takes the beer. So as someone who, you know, April, she, you know, she saves her world and a parallel fantasy, fantasy universe from mm. ruin. You know, to do this devastation. You know, you need you need to uh, you need to use a rubber ducky, obviously. Of course. Yeah. So in the game, you find. But bear in mind, this is kind of before she even is before you or she knows that she's learned of this. She's got powers, and she's right. going to go to Paris. She's just a college student. This okay. Point. But because it's a point of the adventure game, anything you click on, you want to click on it. Yeah. And you want to get it. And you want yeah, to find it. out what's going you, on. You find so she finds a key stuck on a subway track. You go well. If it's there, I need to have it. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. No explanation as to why you need it. Right. You, you want it. Um, so you can't turn off the power because it's all electrified and you can't turn it off so to do to to get the key you mm. don't even know what the key is for but to get the fucking key <laughs> you have to leave the area completely right. go back to your apartment and you've got to fiddle with another completely different machine which controls water pressure which has nothing to do with the tracks and you have to steal the clamp in there okay. in this machine yeah. but it's holding a leak in Yeah. so you have to use like like her precious ring that her dad gave her when she was 16 right. to conduct electricity through the cut wire in the corner and then that powers the device up and it loosens the clamp then you can take the clamp then looking out her window you see a rubber ducky in the water now using breadcrumbs it attracts a seagull who punches the duck and the duck floats away you then take a random dirty clothesline which is hanging there because why, why not why not and then you go down and you find a deflated duck and then you reinflate it or despite the fact it's probably got germs beyond the <laughs> then you tie the clothesline to the clamp and then you remove the band-aid which is patching the hole in the duck and then you force the clamp open mm-hmm. with the deflating toy and when the duck finishes deflating the clamp will snap closed onto the key getting the key Jesus Christ there's a high voltage cable running parallel with the rail and something's gotten stuck between them looks like a large iron key. When I was a wee lass, I tried fishing a couple of times in the pond behind my house, but I never caught anything. I hope my luck's improved. All right. How, how, how did anyone ever do I that? I don't know. How did anyone ever do that? I must have had a walkthrough at this point. You must have had I a walkthrough. I would <laughs> What did the key open? Any... Oh, God. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Let's find out. I, I, like, I, like, after all that, I need to know, at least know what the key opened. It reminds me that, okay, it's just like, when um, I was, uh, uh, I went to a, a, a BBC Worldwide event yeah. where they uh, they had uh, Doctor Who Lego Dimensions to play. And this game is intended primarily, it's Lego, it's Doctor Who, it's intended primarily for children. You know, people of all ages can play, but it's intended pr- primarily for children. And these games, these uh, Lego Dimension games, are ludicrously complicated. To the extent that, <laughs> the extent where, do you know, do you know the setup where you've got like a little, um, physical thing. Yeah, it's this yeah. physical, um, yeah. interaction. So you've got like, um, Lego toys yeah. and you put them on a little sort of dark dial and then they go into the game. Utterly fascinating. But then it's great, but then you have to use different characters to achieve different tasks. So I, you're in a lab or something and there's explosions and it's like, right, you need to, uh, be the doctor in this one because he's got, uh, uh, water powers and he can, <laughs> and, and so he can like, 
um, you know, put, put out the electricity with the water. And then you need to be uh, Batman on this one because he's got freezing powers and he can do this. And then you can build this. And it's like, this is so complicated. This is ludicrous. And I, and I walked away, like, angry. I was like, this is too complicated for children. <laughs> and, then, and then a little 10-year-old came up, Diamond, was like, can I play? And I was like, of course you can. Just aced it. He just aced it. He was brilliant at it. First time he played. First time he played. So I, I don't oh, know if there's dear. a thing where maybe maybe kids are, are intuitive and we're just old farts who, who can't hack it. Maybe. It's like the whole coding thing that I don't understand. Kids, kids, lo- ha- kids need to code, apparently. I can't find out with the kids. <laughs> I have to look through a whole wall. Do you know what? Do you know what? I don't want to know. <laughs> it, it could never be worth it. No. It could never be worth it's it. It's probably just some locker in yeah. somewhere else and it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, one more thing I just wanted to touch upon in these games mm. is what I find hilarious is that whatever character you play, they seem to be able to hold a large number of items in their pockets. <laughs> That's true. That's true them. of a lot of games. Yeah. Any games where you pick stuff up, yeah. even like Resident Evil yeah. or whatever, it's like you've picked up this shield and this and all these potions. <laughs> always potions. You've, got 15 you've always got potions things, and it's like, like massive like, objects. It's always like a, yeah. and he's like maybe, a crossbow. And, and, and at most he's got like a little satchel or something. Yeah. yeah. Where, are you, where are you keeping it all? So I just wanted to mention I, I would like a point and click game where gradually the sack gets like larger and larger <laughs> and, and you have just, to like uh, well so, there yeah, are yeah. Some, sometimes, yeah, sometimes you have to sometimes like, you have to stuff because you've got too much stuff but I would like if someone was literally like dragging a massive sack behind them whilst trying to fight dragons or whatever <laughs> Uh, so that, that's essentially it. I mean, lots of other games I could have touched upon, but we'd have mm. been here for like an hour and a half. Yes. So. Uh, Grim Fandango, as I mentioned, brilliant. Grim Fandango. Blade Runner had a brilliant game. game. Um, not, it was sort of a sequel to the film, and you're playing a different character, but it's got all the elements of the, of the film. And mm. it's beautiful, well acted, it looked great. And I, I would actually watch that as a, as a film yeah. on YouTube. Is it, is it better than the film that's not as good as everyone says it is? <laughs> Controversial! People have to do Blade Runner encapsulating the game and everything. The Blade, the Blade Runner verse and the upcoming sequel yeah. starring Gosling. Which is going to obviously be amazing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. Well, as, as we all know from uh, Star Wars, yeah. it's great seeing Harrison Ford uh, <laughs> back in his old roles. We, we love it. Until spoilers, he gets killed. Yeah. Ruined Star Wars The Force Awakens. More like The Farce Awakens. <laughs> Grumpy man. I did ruin Star Wars for me. I'm sorry, <laughs> and I'm sorry for anyone. He I, might be a. I'm sorry for anyone. I just bought the Force Awakens. You should have seen it by now. But if you're a geek and you're listening to this. You must have seen. You Star must have seen Star Wars by now. Everyone's seen it like six times. Uh, it's also Discworld Noir. That was a great little game. Uh, the Terry Pratchett, Terry Pratchett books. Stuff. That was nice. really good. Uh, and Rob Brydon did the voice in that, but I didn't know for years. He couldn't have even been a big deal back no, then. No, he wasn't. It was it, one of his first, first roles. I've had some bad days since I started work as a private investigator. But I'd never woken up dead before. It all started the week before, on a cold and wet September day in Ankh-Morpork, the oldest and most depraved of all the cities on the Discworld. But hey, you've got to love it. But the games are coming back. Um, Point and click. Yeah, Tim Schafer, who is behind like Grim Fandango and other... I've, heard of, I've heard of him. He came up with a game recently called Broken Age. Which is yes. which I'm playing right now. I haven't finished it. It is really good. It's it's proper point and click, and it's on the PC. It's just beautiful and great. And I I do. You got any walkthroughs or I am uh, using the use, use, no, use, okay. use the old walkthroughs. There are bits. Yeah. <laughs> baffling. So how anyone could do it? And I look on these forums and like, it's easy, dude. What are you doing? I'm like, fuck you. It's fucking hard. <laughs> but again, I'm just enjoying playing it with the walkthroughs. So yeah. You know, as I said before, you know, compared, you know, players nowadays are obsessed with like blood and gore mm. and multiplaying and you know, online gaming. It's something just a bit lovely about sitting in a dark room, I, a cup of tea. I think it kind of engages your not just your imagination, yeah. but also just your brain a bit more because yeah. you're not just like sat down pressing buttons. You have to think and solve puzzles. Sometimes they're too hard. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I think I think it's quite and they tell a little more stimulating. Much better stories than a lot of games. I mean, mm. I love games like Uncharted. Um, they are really good. Mm. But then you get games like I don't know Gears of War and stuff, which I'm sure are very good in their own way. And they look visually yeah. spectacular. They're all like grey and miserable. And they're sort be, of like the DC uh, movies of, of yeah. gameplay. You're not gonna like I don't know. Like Warcraft, I know they're doing a film of Warcraft, mm. but it's not like you know. And yeah, I won't even get onto like those proper online nerdy games like Skyrim. Skyrim, which you know, you know, I'm sure they have their. I did actually try Skyrim because um, my housemate at the time uh, was obsessed with it. Too hard. It's <laughs> just too. It's those ones where you got to like uh, level up and do all mm. these missions and things, and it, it could that could go on forever and ever. And that's yeah. why those games are good because you're not going to ever, you know. Yeah, value for money. Yeah, but I just don't have time for it. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, I'm not clever enough. I'm not clever enough. Um, so, in general, then, um, you know, what's your opinion on these type of games? Oh, well, as I say, I think they do sound like 
like a lot of fun and kind of you know yeah, intellectually stimulating. I'm worried they might be a little too intellectually stimulating because I do remember <laughs> as I, I played I played the Curse of Monkey Island, never completed it because it was because <laughs> it was too hard and I gave up. Um, I think these are these are good games to play if you've got a lot of time on your hands, which I think is why you know in this ever more busy world in which we live, <laughs> people enjoy the simpler games yeah. uh, that are out there, the games that you can just sort of you know play a little bit of GTA and then, yeah. and then stop, and they're not quite so. Uh, involving and you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours on them although I have no time for people who are obsessed with just those games like Clash of Titans whatever it's called you know those mobile games where it's just oh Game of War yeah all that, all that kind of stuff <laughs> yeah. it's like what are you doing you know Uncharted exists right <laughs> uh, but I think having done this episode I think we'll do more gaming episodes I think so uh, I think Sonic deserves his own episode because you've got the cartoon series loads of other I, stuff I guarantee like. 100% We'll do at least a Mega Drive episode, yeah, yeah. and I won't just talk about Sonic. No, I promise. We might actually stop you from talking about it. <laughs> so um, yeah. So then, and then I might do a maybe I'll do a Sonic the Hedgehog episode. Yeah, as well. that'd be really good. Yeah. What are we coming up next? What's in our next? Uh, next, I will be. Do you know what we're going to talk about? Having having gone a little bit out of our comfort zone yeah. and done a gaming episode <laughs> for the first time ever. Back to our roots. Straight back to uh, doing nineties <laughs> cartoons. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to be talking about uh, X Men. Yeah. But very specifically, the way I got into the show originally, which was the uh, fantastic uh, 90s cartoon version. So that's you, what we You teased about. it in the Christmas special, didn't I you? I did, I did. I talked a, 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 little, a little bit about it in the, uh, in the Christmas special, and we'll be revisiting that next time. So remember, if uh, you haven't downloaded or streamed the other episodes, what are you doing? What, what, are, you, what are you doing? Uh, put, down, put, down that, uh, that, that console, put down that console. Put down that console. keyboard. <laughs> put down that keyboard that and joystick. that mouse. That joystick, kids. Uh, and then listen to our podcast. It's, all, all the episodes are on the website, which is twogeekstwobeers.wordpress.com. Mm. Uh, and you can subscribe via iTunes on there uh, and then you can also head over to our Facebook and Twitter pages mm. which is at Two Geeks Cast very good mm. and we're all on YouTube very slowly <laughs> I haven't uploaded uh, any the, since, first, yeah. the first three episodes yeah. are on YouTube with visual bonuses yes. but look out on YouTube because we might uh, have another idea on our sleeves yes we, th- yeah. there's a possibility uh, we've been discussing a possible video spin-off mm. from Two Geeks watch uh, this space watch this space yeah um, well I'll leave you with, I think Monkey Island of the three that I focused on is my favourite, mm. and as you loved it as well, I thought I'd leave you just with a nice little piece of music from from the soundtrack of Monkey Island because nice. it, it was just really nice and sort of piratey and then fun. Little ditty, yeah. Take you back to my Cornish roots. <laughs> so uh, thanks very much, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye bye.